So, well, welcome guys, first of all, to our uh, professional career portfolio, Building Your Personal Presence. And this workshop was asked um, for us to represent, uh, reproduce this workshop a few times, so we've, I'm glad that we actually got to do this, redo this and actually record it this time specifically. So before we get started though, um, I always kind of like to ask specifically kind of what interested you specifically about developing a portfolio. So if we don't mind going around and telling us kind of just one thing that you're hoping to get out today. Mm, well, thinking about to graduate, uh, the crypto is kind of a big mystery. So I feel like uh, building a portfolio allows me to put uh, what I've done on paper, uh, learn more about different careers, and help diversify myself for the uh, job market. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, well. I'm a graduate, and I need a big girl job in my field, so I need a portfolio so I can show off my skills and show them why they should hire me. Absolutely. So okay. Here. Cool. Um, I'm here to learn what a career portfolio is. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing, and I think uh, so one thing that you can always put is that um, a career portfolio is really never completed. It's never really finished. And the reason why I say that is because um, you guys right now, where you're at, and yourself, just recently graduated from CFC, you have kind of developed this, this kind of continuum on um, rigorous uh, activities and programming skills and things over the last four or five years while you've been here at CFC. And then now, as you continue to matriculate, and as you said, get a big girl job, um, you will continue to develop and fine tune those skills, you'll get certifications, you'll go to additional trainings, you'll work on additional projects and programming. So your career portfolio will constantly be updated as you, as you go. And kind of a rule of thumb for me that I've kind of really gotten a habit of, especially for my um, curriculum vita, um, is basically going back in after something's happened or I've done a training or I've done a certification, going back in and updating that information. So basically it's like a running list of all the things that you've done. And the reason why I do that is it makes it a lot more easier, it makes it more effective first, and then number two, it makes it a lot easier when you go back and you're updating the specifics of your portfolio um, so that you have all the information that you need. Um, as you said, to present yourself when you're going to work for um, an employer or when you're going to go interview for a specific job. So we want to kind of jump right in specifically and kind of talk about some objectives um, specifically. <clears throat> so there are some, some key objectives that we want to cover today. First of all, what to include in a portfolio. So talking about, first of all, what is a portfolio and then what are the basic um, components of what makes up a portfolio. Um, what are some effective ways to implement a portfolio and, or market your online portfolio? Um, who actually specifically utilizes a portfolio in this day and age? With We know that the target market is a little bit differently because, you know, um, now, being in where all the social media based, you know, LinkedIn is a great website, that, a resource that you can use where you can actually display and upload your portfolio and you people can search. When they search, they can actually click on it and look at it and use it to see what some of the skill sets are and kind of what sets you apart from other people, um, which I think is really, really important um, specifically because it tells a story of you about yourself and kind of one specifically about what you're wanting to do and kind of where you want to go with your skill set. So we're going to talk about the different uses of an ePortfolio, why it's important, um, how are students currently utilizing an ePortfolio across the field, or, and realize across the board this is still a really new field. So when I actually learned to develop my portfolio, no one said this is what you need to do. I just did a lot of research and found that it is the easiest, most effective way for you to market your skill sets in a visualized, very organized manner. Okay, so when you go to an interview, you can present what your skill sets are, and so someone can say, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little about some of your projects. And you can say, well, let me show you. And you can pull it out and start telling them the story of you and your skills while you're talking, and it kind of helps paint a picture kind of a storyboarding to have you about what some of the key components of your skill sets are, what set and strengths, and what sets you apart. Um, so we'll also look at various different examples of e-portfolios that, that I found specifically. 
We'll talk about the layout and then we'll kind of wrap up with answering some questions. So one of the things that I want to do is that everybody today will be getting, um, and I'll have this probably ready for you by probably Monday. Um, I'll have you a new Roar jump drive with all the components that you'll need, the various different things, so that you can start working on this um, and start pulling the pieces together, okay? Um, so as we go and move forward, we talked about objectives. So, <clears throat> all right. Now, when you see this picture right here, and this is kind of one of those things that's kind of um, has been standing out specifically, um, what are some things that stand out to you? First of all, does everybody know what this is called? Uh, I've seen them before. Is right. A word map or... Yeah, a word map or a word yeah. web. Yeah. So basically, they put a whole bunch of words into this thing, and based on how much the words are used, it formulates this, this design, basically. Um, and so this one was the different components of creating a portfolio. And I thought this was interesting because I found it. Frog? Yeah, so when you, <laughs> so when you see this, what are some things that stand out to you, first of all? Yorkshire. Yorkshire, okay. The, the word frog. Development, okay. The word frog. <laughs> Qualifications. Qualifications, okay. How about you, Devontae? What's what's one word or phrase that stood out or stands out to you? Uh, well, the big one before that, learning and development. Learning and development, okay. So the key, the key focal points, right? Which is really the main reason behind a portfolio. So learning and development, which are two components of your, your professional identity. You're developing your professional presence online or on paper, absolutely. For me, um, workforce stood out. That was one of the first things that I always see. Even though it's not as large as learning and development, I think I kind of always attract, that's always where my eyes kind of go. Workforce, yeah. consultation. Um, you said frog, so that's one, too, that's kind of interesting when it's mm -hmm. kind of up there. Like, why would you put frog? But if, you're, but if you are in a biological major, you're in a major that's more of a STEM focus, science, engineering, technology, math, you might have some examples of projects that you've done, whether it be a genetic project, whether it be something that you've done with frogs. Um, when, I think, when I think of frogs specifically, the first thing that I think of is that frog learning system. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> leap, is it called leap pad? Yeah, leap pad. That's what I always think of when I see the frog. So I don't know if that's what they were going for in this picture or not, but it's something I found online and there's the, the actual website right there um, that I found, but they have various different ones based on what the word association is, so it's pretty cool. The word July seems to pop out at me. July, okay. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why is that? Why is July in there? Well, I, I wonder, right? Huh. So that's something that there wasn't really a lot of explanation about why specifically some words were in there, like museums, but I think you know, if you were a curator or you did exhibits or something, I could see why that one would be in there. Um, West, that's another one. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, why is that there? Um, and then portfolio, look at portfolio. Do you see portfolio in there? I was about to say, portfolio and materials seem to be the smallest one. Portfolio and materials, okay. And, and curriculum is pretty small. Curriculum is pretty small, small as well. Priorities are pretty small, small. Yeah, priorities, qualifications, portfolio, curriculum are really, really small. Yeah. Why do you think that is? And historical. Yeah, yeah probably. Maybe. Maybe they aren't used as much or said as much, or maybe they're just not as important. Okay. And there is no right or wrong answer. I just, I found this really interesting how, you know, this word, you know, picture was created based on the different usage of words, specifically that are focused on career portfolios. Maybe a lot of people who are in fields like science and things like that do more portfolios than other I think a lot of the, it really depends on what career field you're in, absolutely. So education-based, um, science-based, obviously computer science, anything in the arts, because you're in you know, studio art, um, drafting and design, any of those things, specifically you usually hear about portfolios, but in typical other majors, it's not something that's really stressed. Mm. And I think it's something that should be stressed. I think all college, I think one of the requirements of all college students should be that you have to create a portfolio in order to graduate. Um, to be part of your curriculum because it really if you start your freshman year and you continuously work on it until your senior year you will have a very polished portfolio when you, before you graduate and that's really ideally what you want to do because it's a direct relation to your experience in undergrad that you can take for you whether you go to grad school whether you're applying for a job whether you're applying for an internship or placement or something 
So these are just some further websites that I had. And if you guys want to copy the PowerPoint, I'll send one out to you. Um, that we've looked up basically different additional opportunities and information about portfolios, e portfolios, why they're important, and the different reasons why we use them in the career field. Um, but it really still really is very effective in a job search process, especially if you're not always the best interactor. I mean, when I say interactor, I mean interaction level. So maybe you're more of an introvert, but when you get in a group setting, you maybe get a little nervous. So having a portfolio is a great way to keep you on track. It's a great way to kind of help you spotlight your information, your skill sets, and still put yourself out there without, you know, feeling almost like you're re rejected. Because sometimes individuals who are introverts have a little bit more challenging opportunity to get out there and really put themselves out there in that perspective. So uh, one of the terms that we found recently that I was reading in an article by the American Counseling Association was the term colliding. So as opposed to networking, so networking is more specifically for our extroverts, but colliding is more of where our introverts are. So basically you're colliding into somebody else and you're meeting and making an opportunity. Um, and so using that, that opportunity really works well with the blend of the two um, concept with um, using portfolios because you can present a tangible representation of your work and kind of show and have a dialogue as opposed to just saying, hey, Selena, my name's Tom. How are you doing? You know, just kind of just walking up to a person and just start talking. So it's a little bit easier dialogue, I think. And it makes it less awkward. I have a problem with carrying on conversations or starting out conversations a lot. Yeah, and, that, and that's what makes the portfolio a great opportunity because it can really be a centerpiece of, the, of your experience. Like I said, when you're going to an interview, and you'll see this in just a second, when you go to an interview, you can put it down and someone can say, well, tell me a little about yourself. And you can say, well, let me show you. I have a career portfolio, and you can follow along with me, and you can show and talk about your skill sets and stuff. And people, trust me, people are blown away that you have that much organizational skills, first of all, but that you are that well, um, more effective at really telling your story. Because that's what you're telling. You're telling the story of Julian. You're telling the story of Selena or, or Devante or, or Alexis or, or Tom, in my, in my case. So putting that... That, that perspective out there, people really get to see what you're about, what you're capable of, some of the skill sets that you have, some of the projects that you can do, and it really, really allows you to shine. You know, the, the different work that you've been doing for Roar, all the amazing flyers you've been making, and getting, we've been getting great reviews on, those are pieces that I would definitely encourage you to put in your portfolio because it shows represented right there you know, what some of your works are specifically that you've created, you know, um, professionally. Would you put any work in a portfolio that you, um, outside of the flyers, just like anything that you want, like, is it any work or is it just work that you've chosen that stick out to you or is it just like all aspects? Right, so we'll get to some more of the handouts in just a second. Um, we'll talk about those specifics about what are some things that would be, you know, pieces that you would put in your portfolio, okay? okay. All right, so, so what do you need for the project, okay? So this is creating your portfolio. So a career portfolio really is a finished product, like I said before. It's something that's constantly being worked on. It's constantly in, not flux, but transition, because you are constantly going to doing events, going to new opportunities, going to learning opportunities, reading new information, um, kind of working on yourself. So this, this concept is kind of a more work posted soon. So something similar as, as a placeholder. So remember, as you're going forward and you're working on projects, portfolios are great because they allow you to tell the story of what you accomplished and what you achieved so far. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, so, well, wait, are you going to, well, I might be moving ahead, but which one is better, uh, like a paper portfolio or an electronic portfolio? Okay, um, that's a really good question. And one of the things we will talk about that in the second is the, the different baselines for what you need to look at specifically depending on what career field that you're in. So what do you include in a portfolio? Okay. So obviously the, the baseline, so here right here you have this, a packet with you, some information. Um, so one of the first things you look on here is we talk about what a portfolio is. The next major element would be um, talking about the resume. So you know, the Career Center talks a lot about resume development. You know, it's always something that we should have on hand about specifically you know, giving to employers because they want to know what are, what are your skill sets, right? So resume is really quick. Um, there's usually a lot of key action words um, that draw people's attention in, specifically speak of what your skill sets are so people know, okay, what, what is this person about, right? Um, the next thing, obviously, is contact information. 
Now, you think that's something very simple, but I know college students, and they, they travel, they move apartments, they change locations, they change phone numbers, they change email addresses. <laughs> so it's really, really important that you, as a young professional, that you make sure that you update your contact information um, because you might miss an opportunity if you don't have the correct information out there, right? So always make sure you have correct contact information. And also, uh, this one could be work slash projects completed. So you ask, well, what do we put in there, right? So some of the things that you can put in there is relevant work projects. So if you're applying for a specific internship or a specific program and they have um, for instance, one of our students is applying to um, this national program this summer to work with uh, wildlife you know, out in Washington. So one of the things that she's been working on is having to do a lot of still lifes, you know, um, you know drafts and pencil uh, markings and everything, um, pictures and watercolors, whatever, because they want to see um, can she produce these information for her portfolio. So that would be a relevant um, project that's directly proportionate to or relevant to what she's trying to apply for. Screenshots. So screenshots are another great opportunity where you can take screenshots of your programs, your opportunities, if you did a website or you did a program or you did a project, that you can take a you know a screenshot and put it in there um, in your portfolio to kind of show some things that you've worked on. Um, another great thing to include is an explanation or, or, or a preface, and that's pretty much, as you see on my, my paper that I gave you, kind of breaks it down specifically and talks about what it is. Um, so that's really the kind of the introduction of the portfolio, right? So why are you making the portfolio? It's always nice to have kind of a statement about what is its purpose, what its intended purpose for the audience that will be reviewing this, okay? And then also grades or comments. So if you get projects that you've done for class where you, you had a syllabus that said the following you know projects are you need to be completed and you got this project and you just you know got an A A plus those are great things to include in your portfolio because it shows you that you're diversified right it shows you that you can you can rise to the challenge of various different projects and you can see kind of what it is. Um, an example of that you mentioned earlier which one should we use versus the uh, the latter okay so I have two examples of hard copy portfolios uh, this one was a way way long ago was my undergraduate. This is a hard copy portfolio of my undergraduate. So I was very, very involved with a lot of out service, community service, constantly doing stuff. So I basically put a paper trail uh, of my stuff. I'm in a table of contents, you know, resume. And then I took a project in my class, uh, my minor in youth nonprofit management, we had to learn how programming from implementation idea to programming to implementation and then evaluation. So we have to take it from step to step to step. So that's one of the first things that you see is a, a project that we had to do from the baseline about why we did it, you know, kind of going into the project itself, and as it continues going, we have PSAs, information about the program, outcomes, you know, um, it goes more in detail. Budget, if we have, if we have a request for budget in there, specifically, you know, actionable items and so forth. So when you're kind of going through the process, it shows you the visionary, you know, creative phase to the programming piece with the actionable items to the implementation of when you actually put on the event or the program and then the evaluation assessment. So what was the feedback, you know? Did people have really good feedback? Um, you can pass that around. Um, did they have really poor feedback? You know, what worked, what didn't work? And you can also put those comments in there as well, which you'll see in just a few minutes, I'll show you. Um, you can kind of see what, what some of the feedback was, because people always like to know, well, what did people think about it? You know, was it, was it something that didn't go over well? Was it something that did go over well? What did people like, what did people not like? So you get a, kind of a really good idea. And I'm guessing it's all right to have some like comments that aren't poor as long as you learn from that aren't great unless you like learn from them, right? Right, absolutely. I think yeah, I think that's one of the things when you're when you're building the portfolio. If you have a project that you didn't, you kind of did okay on, but there was some room for improvement. You can also put that in, but make sure that you put like a, not a, not a disclosure, but a statement that kind of talks about what did you learn from the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That way, you see tangible learning outcomes, and you can see kind of like okay. So we didn't do so well on this project, but what did you learn from it, right? Because one of the usual main questions you'll hear on an interview typically is, tell me about a time that you're working on a project or you're working with students or a program and it didn't, it didn't go as, as well as you thought. Okay. Right? So that's usually one of those, those go-to questions. So you can utilize that, right? So that would be one of those areas that you could pull out and talk about specifically. So. 
Um, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so continue this. Um, you also want to have references. So three important key people to have in your portfolio is, first of all, if you're currently employed somewhere, either as a work-study student or you're on campus and you're, as you're camp, at the controller's office or wherever you're stationed, you want a current job supervisor reference letter. So always go ahead and ask in advance. I always tell people, get, uh, students, give your professional refer, uh, references at least about, it would be nice to give a month, but if you can give two weeks at least, that's really kind of a good baseline to, to be able to write an effective letter. Um, if you ask for a 24-hour turnaround, some people will just look at you and say, are you crazy? Um, unless you want something that's just thrown together. So I kind of have one of my big pet peeves is students that wait till last minute, because I'm always like, so you're asking me to give you, give you garbage, basically. And I, I think I'm more highly than students, so I always tell them, you know, don't wait till last minute, because if you want something that's just garbage, well, I can do that, but it's not going to really talk about your experiences and who you are. Mm -hmm. I want to put some time and effort into it, so give me a little bit of leeway. Um, the next one is your previous supervisor. So say that you've had multiple internships, multiple sites. It's always a good idea to put references from other people. So if you, if you diversify yourself and you have maybe an internship here, maybe an internship in the community, maybe something at the hospital, having those different references would be a really good point to talk about what your experiences are and kind of what are some of the key elements that you learn from the experience and also what are some of the things that you can take away. Uh, and then a volunteer supervisor. So, you know, when you guys volunteered out at um, the Low Country Children's Museum, I had the response from um, the volunteer coordinator, what she said. She gave a really great response. So that's something you could put in your portfolio to talk about some of the various different aspects of things that people say. Um, that's That was my undergraduate, and this was my master's, so I've got multiple whoa, copies. Whoa, whoa, so, way more tabs. Yeah, so way more tabs. This one's a lot more... That's um, all just undergraduate stuff? Mm -hmm. I need to start doing more stuff. Right. Man, Tom. <laughs> I put a lot of time into things, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a visualizer, right? Um, but this one just kind of takes you through various different things. My experiences working in, in talent search and different programs. You mentioned uh, you could put that in there with comments. So in, in my portfolio, I have a program that I did for a leadership program. Nice. They wrote me a thank you letter or a thank you note. I'll put it in there. Because it talks about, you know, always that, that additional piece back. So obviously anything like that. Also, um, additional letters, you know, when people send you emails or things, you can put them in your, in your portfolio as well. So you can push that one around as well. And these are just hard copy ones to look at. So um, you always have to have a baseline. So remember, you know, just because it looks like a lot of stuff right now, a lot of stuff that you're doing right now, you may not even know, realize, can go into your portfolio. So remember, you got to have to start with a baseline first and build up your portfolio as you go. Especially as a young professional, you may not have all the pieces, and that's okay. Because remember, a portfolio is really never truly finished. It might be polished, but it may not truly be finished until you, you know, you're constantly learning throughout your career and your goals. All right. Question. Yes. So, like, uh, for example, like I was asked since I came to Spectrum by like BSU and um, Scope to do the talent show. Right. And like, if I still have those emails, I could like print off a like screenshot of. Absolutely, I would include pictures too from the talent show. Oh wow. Maybe oh, wow. maybe one where you're spinning or you're doing some beats <laughs> in, in the DJ booth or something. Absolutely. Okay. So always look for those opportunities where you can spotlight things. It's not like you're bragging. Because what you're doing, remember, when you're going to an interview or you're going to an interview for an internship or for, for future employment or for grad school or for graduate admissions, people want you to sell yourself. That is your time to not hold back. It's your time to really put yourself out there and say, this is who I am, this is what I can bring to the table, and this is why you should hire me. Okay? All right, moving on. Great questions, by the way. All right, so effective ways to implement and market your portfolio. These are just some simple ways that you can do. Obviously, a website. So, you know, social media is really cutting edge these days. So you can do LinkedIn, you can do Facebook, you can do Twitter. I mean, all, all kinds of websites are out there. You can do a CD demo, you know, which is always a good thing to put out your information. Um, you can do a business card, and then on the back of the business card, you can put a website link. You, know? um, you can do networking opportunities. When you go to, to networking events, um, always have that business card with that back of that information for somebody to go check out your stuff. They can always follow back up with you. And career fairs. Okay. Okay. All right. So who uses a portfolio? Well, we kind of break it down into three major, uh, these are just kind of three pieces that I wanted to focus on. First of all, college students. So the main contender for using a portfolio are our college students. One is to acquire an internship, which is pretty basic. 
you want to acquire skill sets, you want to go somewhere, you want to impress the individuals that are there because you've learned skills, right? You want to show that this is where you want to be. Um, once you've completed your internship, so once you've completed your internship with projects and what you've learned and outcomes and a reference letter, you can put that in your, your portfolio. Um, teacher education student. Teach, all teacher education students have to create a portfolio, which is one of the things I think is really, really important about their major that the college should really inherit and really use um, as a baseline is that all college students should have a basic portfolio, at least a basic. You know, you don't have to be complex, but something that shows your skill sets, what you're learning, um, so that you can apply it. Because remember, knowledge without application is just is just learning. You haven't really been able to apply it. But if you can take knowledge and really apply what you've learned, that's going to get that's going to sell. That's going to get you a job. Um, the next one could be business or art students. So if you're wanting to go in the world of business, this is something that business leaders use all the time. Art students, studio art, arts management, um, computer science, computer programming. Um, you know, there's very creative ways that you can include in your portfolio to kind of really make it, put it out, put it out there. Um, job seeking. So if you're a job seeker and you're currently looking for employment, seeking employment. One of the things that I put, and I'm going to show you this in a little bit, in my most recent job application on my res on my curriculum vitae was a hyperlink to I use the PDF hyperlink to my career portfolio. You can click on it, and it took you to my resume, and people actually looked at it. Oh, wow. So at my last, my major interview at UNC Chapel Hill, they were talking about my pro, pro, uh, resume, talking about my portfolio in, in a resume form, which was pretty cool. So they actually had looked at it and saw very intricate pieces that really impressed them. So once again, you're setting yourself apart from other people because you're going the extra mile. Um, also, an employee seeking a promotion or a raise so that you've gone through additional training or certification. A lot of times, our computer science majors usually, once they've got a job, once they've received a job and uh, employment, they want them to go and further their certifications. They want them to get renewals of certifications. Um, you might continue on and get your certification, national licensure, licensure, or right now I'm only a few more classes away from, uh, from sleeping my national counseling exam board and getting that certification. So, you know, it's always nice to have those additional pieces because it makes it more in a, more of a polished package um, to show for reasons why you should have employment. You complete your PhD. That's another thing. People, you can always talk about negotiating job salary, um, having those additional things for a raise as well. Um, and then faculty members seeking tenure. This is something that I always think that if faculty members or teachers in general want to seek tenure in your position, it's always a great opportunity to develop a portfolio about what have you completed while you have been there at the university or the institution. So, all right, good luck. Thanks. So, so reasons why you should create a portfolio or utilize an e-portfolio. So, um, organize your work throughout your degree program and across your classes is the first reason. Uh, to have a visual representation slash a hard copy of your work to present to individuals, whether it be your professor, whether it be an internship site coordinator, whether it be a career center, whether it be somebody at a job fair, and so forth. Um, to help you with the job search process, obviously very helpful. Uh, to use during your job interview process, right? All right. Now, how do you intend to utilize your career portfolio? So this is still pretty relevant. I need to update it probably, even though this is 2016. This is the most recent that I found, but I'll probably update it probably soon. How do you intend to use your career portfolio? So this was back in 2004, but it's still pretty relevant. At a National Career Association conference. So the number one reason why people said they were using a career portfolio was a class assignment. That's pretty common, okay? The second level that was under that, so 77 people said class assignment, 48 said they used the portfolio for applying for a job. Next after that, 36 was to identify certain skill sets that they had or they received or were working on. Um, 29 to apply for graduate school or graduate education or professional, professional school. And then the last one but not least, 20 individuals said utilizing it during the interview preparation process. Okay. All right, so this one specifically kind of shows you, it's a little more recent, kind of shows you e-portfolio percentages in the sectors across um, colleges and universities, how many people are using career portfolios. So it's still pretty relevant in 2010. Um, so this was courtesy of the camp Campus Community project, project that kind of showed you. So we look at public universities versus private versus public four-year colleges, 
private four-year and community colleges. So you can see kind of where the variety of them are and who's utilizing portfolios and who's not. So 2003, you can see specifically not a lot of people were using them, and then up to 2010, you can see the, the, the increase in frequency, right? So the majority of people that are utilizing it now, private universities, public universities, public four-year colleges, definitely private four-year colleges, and still community colleges haven't fully caught up yet. It'd be nice to see community colleges get that number up. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, so what represents your portfolio? So on your, your hand, lovely handout, um, kind of tells you what to include specifically on your portfolio and what are some specifics. So you have some great things. You have a, pro, a portfolio checklist, which is kind of nice to so have additional questions to answer when you're making your portfolio, which is kind of nice. So self-reflection on your degree program. So sometimes there might be capstone projects, there might be a deeper reflection. Um, sometimes your first year experience, you might have to do a reflection project on college itself. You know, um, maybe a personal statement that you're working on for grad school could be also be used in your portfolio. Um, an asset in, um, in a job a hunt process, the job hunting process, so you can utilize that to help you find a new job. Um, key performances are basically key projects that you've done, what they call art artifacts. So artifacts are individual pieces. So these, these specific pictures and things that I have in here, um, like this right here, these would be considered artifacts. So artifacts is just a fancy way of saying pictures and emails and things that you create that you can put in your portfolio. Okay. All right. Platforms for creating your flexible displays of abilities and interests. So you could create, uh, maybe you wanted to do, um, sometimes faculty members ask students to go present at conferences or present at various different way, things that are coming up. This is another great way to really utilize this in terms of applying for programs and so forth. All right, so here, this looks kind of complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. So this is the process for using a career portfolio. So first of all, you have the artifact. Once again, the artifact is the actual pieces, the hard copy tangible pieces, the key performances, the events, the programs that you're gonna put into your, your portfolio. Then you have the evaluation criteria. So how did you evaluate it? That's always one of the things, you know, really, really, this day and age, everybody wants to know assessment, assessment, assessment. So it's a good idea to really get in the, the, the habit and routine of doing self-assessment on yourself to figure out what are some of the evaluation pieces. And you know, if you had a performance or an event or a project that you did in class that didn't do so well, what was the required criteria for that project? You might want to put that also, include that in your portfolio. Um, the description reference evaluation of the criteria, once again, the whole descriptive piece that kind of breaks it down for you and lets you know what was evaluated, what are the various different components. The description, you know, basically describing what are we looking at, you know, why is it, why is it important. So this is the structure of what makes up a really definitive, um, very successful portfolio. All right, so who is the audience? So this is important because, you know, you asked, Hard copy versus digital, right? So you have to know who your audience is. So who, 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 first of all, will you be showing your portfolio to? So all, one of the things we asked when people first got here, I mean, I think you're right here, Julian, it's been a long week, um, is what's one thing that you're hoping to get out of today? So we had different answers. Um, one student was like, wanted to learn more about what a portfolio is. One student was talking about utilizing a portfolio to get a big person job. That's probably help with my internship or get a real job. So those are kind of things, you know, who, who your audience is. So who will you be presenting this to? Your faculty or your advisor, okay? This usually happens with you want to review your coursework, you want to stay on track with the degree program, recommendations for capstone projects, research papers. <clears throat> internship recruiters. So if you're kind of trying to look at an internship or get a placement in a job, Compare credentials against hiring needs, other candidates, and know uh, style sets. So know what you're getting in, into, right, specifically, and how you compare to other people. Human resources recruiters. So some uh, really big companies have a human resource you know, um, 
career fair where the human resource officer is out there um, trying to recruit diligent, a highly articulate, engaging individuals. If you have a portfolio, it really kind of sets you apart from other people. And they know that you're serious because you're taking the time to actually create one to work on what your skill sets and knowledge, is, knowledge sets that you have that you can bring to the table. You can say, this is why you should hire me, basically. And then also you can use it for organizational skills and marketing strategies too within the human resources recruiter. All right. So a portfolio. So what are our organizational options? There's different options. Who knew there was different options, right, to a portfolio? The different types of portfolio. Just like a resume, right, portfolios have different structures. So the first one is the basic one, the chronological. That's pretty much basic. So chronological basically means um, most recent to, to past, right? So you want to start where you are right now and work your way back, okay? So that's always kind of a way to think about chronological, so different projects. Or you can work forward, depending on what you're, what you're going for. The next one is more of a functional one, which I kind of like a little bit more effectively, because the functional one is based on what you're going to use it for. So in your case, if you're going to be using it for grad school versus employer, you might want to do more of a functional um, portfolio to kind of figure out what are some of the key components, aspects that you want to put in. Uh, once we get the paperback for your independent study, that's something that we're going to include in your portfolio because it's, it's definitely going to be the amount of work and that you put in time, that's definitely a project that I would, I would be proud of. All right, thematic. Now, when you see the word thematic, what's something that stands out to you? Like a theme, theme right? Yeah, like a concept. Right. Concept. So for this one, this was where a lot of our artists come in. So if you're an art-driven person, very creative mind, the thematic theme might be more of a relevant piece for you because it has a thematic process, right? There's a theme to it. The, the, the actual, not only is it functional, but the, the overall theme. You can say, my journey to graduation. Or come up with some kind of cool theme about, you know, artistic ability, about, you know, explaining what you're trying to, to present. Sounds okay. cool. There's a specialized one. So if you want to be specialized and you want to target a certain specific job or project or placement, that's where this one will come into, into play. And I'll show you what those look like. I... They similar to resumes in that you have one that's like a master portfolio and then you have other portfolios specifically for different like jobs or yes, internships or whatever. Absolutely. So a portfolio, once you create one, you can adapt your portfolio for different perspectives. So it's always good you have to first create one, right, to have one. So once you create it, you can then target what your audience is gonna be and what your use is gonna what kind of usage are you going to get out of it, right? <clears throat> so with a hard copy portfolio, you often must choose organizational methods or go with a, a ring binder or you know, use a flexible binder or something specifically. Um, but those of you that came tonight will have, um, I'll have, try to have a binder with you with um, a jump drive on Monday with the different pieces that you'll need to start working on your portfolio. So check back with me. I'll have, try to have that by Monday afternoon. Um, and then also on the web, you know, you can use formal methods to your advantage. Um, because you guys came, you'll also get access to our Prezi. I'll let you guys have access to Prezi to create your own uh, Presume if you want to start there. But once again, in order to do that, you have to have a starting point. So I always tell students, start with the hard copy first and work your way up. And then you can do the digital copy. Okay. All right. So here's what we have looking side by side. So the chronological versus the functional. Okay, so what are some things that stand out to you? This one is kind of just going with the whole concept of college life. So chronological versus functional. What are some things that stand out to you? The arrangement of materials. Okay, can you go more in detail? When okay. you say the arrangement, I, I know what you mean, but I want, I want people to understand. Okay, so like for the chronological one, it's like, in order exactly how, I guess, they would be for, for in order how you would right. have done it, right. versus the functional one where, like, it's organized, looks like, based on not necessarily when you did stuff, but categorized by what goes together. So, right. like, you have, on one side, you start off with your freshman year and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But then on the other side, you have, like, you start off with your design and things like that. And then you go, like, your freshman year stuff is next and right. things like that. Absolutely. Cool. Anybody else? She hit it on the head. Okay. Next one. 
So here we have side by side the functional, the functional versus thematic. What are some things that stand out to you? Categories, okay. Mm. I mean, oh, just on first glance, they look different. Okay. They, what, what are some things that stand out to you? So you said the categories. Yeah. So let's go more in detail about that one. What are the specific categories that jump out to you? Is that, uh, is that more the application part? Okay. So it's more application on the college functional piece. And the thematic is what? Building upon what you've done. Building upon what you've done. So maybe more of a philosoph philosophical piece or more of a, a epiphany moment or more of a creative visionary piece. Once again, the thematic usually is used a lot by more our creative individuals. Um, now, like I said, this one, becoming an engineer, that's obviously one of our STEM areas, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of creative energy, too, in that area as well. So, okay. All right. So this was just an example of something I kind of put in, kind of put a little side-by-side, -side, chronological versus function. So the dates for a chronological organization, year one, year, year two, year three, versus the categories for a functional organization, teaching, counseling, consulting, and then, once again, going back to that introduction piece, which we talked about right here, which would be the explanation or preface, the introduction of the portfolio, right? And that's what that is, so the reflective introduction. So, so you can see right this part, to obtain a position at a regional or state university where my skills in human development, leadership, organizational communication, program development, and service learning will be utilized to assist the organization. So once again, a brief narrative about yourself. So this is kind of like the objective piece that you're taking from your resume. Okay. When you target it. Not all resumes have to have an objective, but if there's a specific target that you're trying to reach, that's always a good thing to put in there. Okay. And that's kind of what, the, what this part right here directly is engaging. All right. So some of the technical specifics. So this is kind of a little right here. Presume or presafolio. So future portfolio building. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Creating PDFs. Obviously, PDFs are the way to go. Um, now, they used to not have that updated version where you can change things a while back. But now, you can actually get the upgraded PDFs where you can change, you can edit, you can do those kind of things, which is kind of nice too. Um, but these are just some ways, some, <coughs> some free space that you can use is portfolioflashtago.com. It's a free site, so you can use it, you can upload and create your portfolio there and use it free. I think um, after a while, after a certain number of like storage databytes or so, or megabytes, they do charge you eventually. But if you, you for like basic stuff, you can get up there and pretty much work around. Um, obviously, naming your web files, you know, don't do something crazy. Um, you know, you want to do something that's going to be creative, but also something that speaks to what it is specifically that you're trying to accomplish. Um, and then if you wanted to buy a domain name and hosting your files elsewhere, obviously that's going to be costing money. So something to think about in the future. Oh, uh, wait, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they still do it, but I know Google Docs has like a Google site mm -hmm. portion. So could I do a, a portfolio or e-portfolio on the Google site? Yes. Yeah, so Google does now what they call Google Slides. So you can make like a, like a PowerPoint presentation, almost like a PDF piece that you can't change once someone views it. And you, as long as you have a Google Drive, it will always be there. So that's a great, great, thank you for making that suggestion because that's a free aspect that most people have, uh, which we didn't used to have a few years ago, which is nice that Google has also created that. Um, if you're a writer and you do a lot of reflective writing or you do a lot of journal, journal writing, Google also has something called Google Keep or Google Kit and is like an online journal. Mm -hmm. So you can do that as well. Of course, you know, we use the Google blog, Blogger, so you could include those components into your actual um, portfolio if you choose. All right, um, so making PDFs, so this is pretty common. Everybody knows how to make a PDF, so I don't have to go into talking <laughs> about that. That one's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, come on. Oh, um, I didn't know it's still for portable document format. That's what it stands for. Okay, this one. Uh, yeah, PDF stands for <laughs> portable document format, yes. I know. So, well, like, okay, so I guess you guys did learn something. That's a good thing. So, all right, so Acrobat Reader, obviously, the software, different software is using. The commercial one is $450. Typically, it's probably gone up a little bit. $131 uh, for educational. If you work for like an institution like, C, uh, like CSC, it's free. You just have to ask them to update your computer and mm -hmm. give it a habit, which is, which is great, and they'll update it for free. Um, you just got to tell them that you want it. <laughs> I tell them that ITM will have to come over and give you the software. Yeah. It's that easy. 
And and I always like install it or upgrade it, but what exactly? Like I'm trying to read it, but like it's for what exactly? So Acrobat Reader, basically uh, the PDF, Adobe Acrobat Reader, okay. helps you, this software, it, when you come in tomorrow for work, mm -hmm. well, actually tomorrow's Friday, so you won't be at work probably. I will be here. You will, I'll show you when we go into Acrobat Reader, the updated version, how you can actually edit. I was showing Megan today. She was like, oh, I didn't even know this yeah. had this. Because I can go in and I can actually um, change and I can add comments. Oh, you wow. can do a lot of cool things that you couldn't do originally with PDFs. So I can actually add stuff, you can take, delete stuff, you can add stuff in there, you can add pictures. I mean, you can do so many new things. Can I create file just to listen? Yeah, you can. Yeah, come on by. So, yeah, I've gotten pretty, pretty, I, at first, you know, if you look at the Roar website now, and, or the Roar um, Oaks account, and you see all of the evaluations mm -hmm. that have forms that you can fill out and send, I created those with the new Acrobat Reader. So, yeah. PDF, yeah, so the fact that we have a really cool upgraded version, I learned how to. I learned some stuff, new stuff this past semester. How to make online digital forms that you can submit via Dropbox, which is pretty cool. What? All right. So these are just kind of showing you some kind of some pricing specifically. If you wanted to, to look at uh, the different selections for Prezi, you know, ten dollars a month is you know typically a subscriber for Prezi for product presentations. Um, the presentation will be publicly visible for zero dollars a month, no fee. So you can basically, if you create one for Prezi for public. You know, people can view you at all times. If you don't want to have your stuff out there, you can always pay ten dollars a month. Twenty dollars is the pro, and then Teams. Basically, you picking depending on how much you're going to, how frequency you're going to be using Prezi, um, we'll decide that specifically. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the online fee, educational fee, is free, uh, low cost, and then a professional in the business format. So. All right. So this is right here. This is my portfolio. Now, one of the things I'll take you in and show you in just a second when I log into Prezi, but one of the things that I use, I like the functional, but I also like the thematic. So for me, career portfolio, you know, my name, this is kind of the story of Tom. So basically when you go in there, you will see that the functional is based on different pieces. So up here, what are some of the things that you notice about the Presume? Um, your uh, title. Okay, the title. Mm -hmm. All your information is easily seen at the bottom, like contact info. Contact information stands out. Each one, the team themed in a way. Yeah, so that we have the different clusters, right? So that's the functional part. So theme is very thematic. So I have it broken out into education, experience, key skills, um, interest, and then references. So once again, when you start getting references from internships, from individuals, you can start putting those actually into your, your portfolio, um, which I have. Um, you can kind of go through and see that specifically. But this was one of the, the, the Prezi software templates that I found. I was like, I love this. I want to turn it into a Presume. And so then I started creating it, what I want it to look at, what I want it to look like. And then once you get it done, you can actually go through and show it. Nice. All right, so here, um, this is at Florida State University. Um, they actually have, through their career center, they have the ability for, to make portfolios, which is something that I really would like College of Charleston to yeah. eventually move into. They don't have that yet for host domain. I really hope that eventually the new director, whoever the crap the career center is, gets into this because I think it's really important. Um, but they give you free, free domain space okay. um, in their system to create your portfolio. Wow. So if you click on the next part. So it's like cloud storage almost, like Pretty much the school gives Yeah, it gives you cloud storage in that. All right, so here we have, this is what the portfolio kind of looks like. So it's, it's laid out very simple. You have profile, you have resume, skills, transcript, references, and artifacts, which once again, the artifacts are the events, the programs, the things that you've created. So here we have, once again, we have the introduction. This is who Sarah is. The academic overview, the objective, once again, if it's specifically trying to gear towards a certain thing, she has it right up here and then the qualifications, right? Okay. And then she has resume, skills, transcript, references, and artifacts. Okay. Here we have her resume, so when you click on it, it brings up her resume in a Word or PDF format, which is cool, you can scroll it. Okay. Here we have her skill sets, so you can see some of her skill sets, job, internship, service, volunteer work. Once again, things that are from your resume that you can pull out directly and put in your portfolio. 
All right. Here's now. Here's our artifact, her artifacts, or her workshops or events. So here she has a project for waste reduction partners website, and then water efficiency report, Asheville Terrace Apartments. She tells the requirements and the various different artifacts. If you click the next one, okay. kind of shows you. You can click on it. It shows you one of the websites she, she helped create. All right, so these are just more examples of portfolios. Like I said, if you want, to, if you want a, the PowerPoint uh, PDF given to you, I can, I can send it to you guys as well. I'll probably put it on the flash drives for you uh, next Monday. Okay. So you guys have it. So here's another example of a portfolio, and this is a different one. Uh, this was not using, this was once again using the online site. Something very similar to Google Docs, probably, uh, where she kind of created about me, standards, photo, philosophy, professional development, and rationale. So basically kind of her way of working with individuals. So I like kind of the little cool graphics that she has specifically. Right. Here we have another portfolio. Um, she's more specifically a designer. So here we have someone who's an online computer or, um, designer or architect. So she kind of has, you know, welcome to my, you know, what are some of the things that stand out to you in this one, in this portfolio? Um, I don't know if it's a positive thing, but it's not as streamlined as the last one. But it's, it's, it's categorically correct to me. Okay, so it's categorically, it's functional. Yeah, right? very functional. It doesn't stand out as, as more effectively as the last one, right? Yeah, it's not right. as pretty. Okay. That's all right. Like a regular website. Like a regular website. You can even download her resume, which is kind of cool. If yeah. you like just stumbled across it. Yeah. And once again, it's got a picture. Yeah. So you get to yeah. see who you're talking, who you're thinking about. And this is kind of like my, my name is, once again, the introduction, the objective piece, um, what she's yeah. trying to accomplish, the different certifications she has, or different design knowledge and information. That's I like the that's current set up. Hmm? That's the only one. About yeah, they about the current yeah. projects, and once again, those are all hyperlink pages. So when she cl when you click on it, it takes you to that certain page, mm -hmm. similar to like the one that the FSU was on, and the mm -hmm. piece where you click the continuing. These are different examples of what portfolios look like. So, okay, well, good um, job, Lisa. Portfolio checklist. So here, also in your packet, you know, like I said, I don't really like a lot of handouts, but for this workshop, there's a lot of things because you have to have a good baseline. So these are some great portfolio checklists. Um, I do want to read off the quote though on here. So he says one final note. Um, one can never be certain where our careers will lead today. Therefore, using a portfolio to keep track of wherever you've been, it just may help you get, get to where you want to go or get to where you're going next. So basically the preface of that or the background of that is basically you never know where your career is going to start. So it's always a good idea to have a portfolio because you never know where it's going to lead. Mm. Right? So these are some portfolio checklist questions that you should ask yourself. Does the portfolio show your best and most recent work? You know, does it, is it relevant? Um, one of the things I have also in my portfolio, I have postmasters um, information, but I let Ahmed have one of my other things because he was going to a graduate school visit. So I have to create my own again. So I'm going to be going through and creating, putting my stuff back together. But I have all of my artifacts from the one that I did postmasters. So you got your undergraduate, graduate, graduate masters. and postmasters. Yeah. yeah, so this is my, my professional one. Is it best to go by, um, like, like how you got a section off, like by right. a different or higher higher education? Or um, I, I think it is only because I'm in the educational counseling human development realm. So for me, it makes sense. Okay. It's kind of fun, more functional like that, so I can just show the different things. Huh? Young Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's me at a conference presenting different stuff. So Okay. Yeah. So this is the most recent stuff you've been collecting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's been so nice. Yeah, it worked really hard. I yeah. see. I collected those. Can I like take some of your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Put it on my well the thing about it is you guys don't realize a lot of stuff that you've been doing for Aurora, I've been helping build your, your portfolio from the very beginning. Oh you, my God! You oh, don't you don't realize crazy. that, but that's one thing that I've been doing. Oh wow! I did I did that I orchestrated that purposely, but most students don't realize that. Most students are like, oh, what's this workshop about? And I, I keep telling them, uh, students, the reason why we have workshops is to work on your professional and student development. There's a reason. I orchestrated it that way on purpose because everything that we do has a purpose. It's continuously working towards getting you to build a portfolio. Alex, you have a huge portfolio. You do if that's the if that's you do. Yeah. You know, I 
just realized, wait, so does that mean that so all of my jobs and all the stuff that I did, like when I worked at LCWA, when I worked at Kim, you worked at when Paul, I did all right? that yeah. stuff, I can put all of that stuff. That's oh a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I might have a book. So, but I'm saying that there, there's a lot of versatility in this stuff. You guys don't realize that, but that's one thing that I did on purpose. Most people don't realize that, and they only find that out when I have this workshop because they're like, oh my God, that's what, that's what you were doing. And I was like, why do you think I take so many pictures? And I put together all these marketing pieces. There's a reason for that, not just to only market our successes and our story, but to tell your story. Is little there little. a limit on how much stuff to put in your portfolio? Um, not really, because once once died. again, it's it's constantly growing and developing. So you know, you don't want something that's going to be like countless pages and like thousands and thousands of pages, because people aren't going to have time to look at it. But something that's relative like this is pretty common. Um, you know, and you can kind of decide what's the best frequency and an amount that you want to put in there, and okay. different projects. Wow, that's cool. That is so cool. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, there's some stuff from the things that we've done here. <laughs> Breath. Forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like it's like a mem memory journal. Can you turn the light off for me? It is, and that's pretty much what it is, yeah. is a memory journal behind the TV. Okay. I the light. Why did you I know, this? That, that was one of the things that I didn't realize that until the end. I was like, I didn't. I'm famous. I don't know. I'm famous. I'm in the TV portfolio. <laughs> So that might be one thing I need to tell them. Hey, can we move it to a little bit to the left? But, but these are some questions. So are your skills impeccable and uncompromising? So basically, once again, this is your time to sell your skills, sell your skill sets, which, you know, you're bragging right, basically. Mm -hmm. um, number three, have you included samples to match all competencies required in the job match that those possess? So if you're going against other people that might be applying for around the state and so forth, can you compete, once again? If you have a portfolio, I would say yes, you're going to be one of the, one of the number one contenders. Uh, number four, are all exhibit prop, are exhibits properly labeled, self-explanatory, and spell check? Obviously, the one thing you don't want to have is misspelled words. <laughs> so make sure we spell check. Go through that thoroughly. Um, number five, does your portfolio show that you can begin work at a professional level? One of the things right now that we're seeing, a lot of companies' number one complaint is, do students have critical analysis, critical reflection, and are they, do they have interpersonal skills that they can start the job tomorrow, okay? The reason why they're looking for those individuals is because they want to see, you know, do we have to go back and train those individuals? But typically, individuals, that's usually, a, that's usually a risk. So risk assessment comes in when upper management and human resources looks, and, you know, of course, the, usually they have, like, an equitable diversity office where they kind of look at, make sure all the candidates are kosher and stuff. Um, but they go through and say, is this a risk? Does this person have all the skill sets that we need? And that might, might hinder you or might directly impact you how well you proceed and go on. Um, number six, does the portfolio predict that you will grow on the job? So do you, did you automatically have opportunities in there for self-growth and development? Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, have you conducted a practical interview, test run using your portfolio? Do you know how it works? Can you present it? You know, the, the worst thing you can do is have a portfolio that you can't use. You know, so make sure it's functional, make sure it runs, make sure it, it's fluid. One of the things before that I, before I started applying for grad school for my doctorate program, and before I started applying for uh, my jobs, um, for potentially my, what happened next year, is I made sure and ran through my portfolio on my resume to make sure things were fluid, to make sure it, it, was, it was effective, that it worked, that it was tangible, and it was relatable. Mm. Um, you know, did you obtain professional advice for your portfolio from people in the field or career planning staff? This is another key important piece too. If you want to be where someone has been, it's always a really good idea to talk to them and specifically and ask them, what are some things I should be looking at? What are some things I should think about? I should, I should include in my portfolio. And then last but not least is, have you viewed the portfolio at Tate or at Career Planning's office? Obviously this was traditional office specifically. Career Resources does have uh, video mock interviews where you can record yourself, but I've used this uh, new software like Skype, it's called Zoom, and you can actually record yourself now and play it back. So if any of you are interested in that, that software, you can actually put things up, project them on, on the screen and record yourself, 
which is pretty awesome. Is that the program you use with the with the guy you uh Yes. Okay. So okay. when we had our interview, huh? That's a thing. <laughs> Wait, what you got? You were a freshman now, right? Freshman Did he have a beard? Huh? I don't think he had a full beard. Nah. Hello. Hello. I had a little bit. But these are just ways you can help construct your portfolio <laughs> overall. <laughs> All right. Peace, <laughs> Yeah. God. All right. All right. One final note. Oh, sure. You can, like I said, we will go back over again. You can never be certain where our careers will be today. Therefore, use a portfolio to keep track of where you've been. It just helps you get to where you're going next. So that's that. You know what that reminds me of? Uh, have you ever heard that saying? You don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. Absolutely. Like my mom said. Got to build a, a good, strong foundation wow. first before you get, before you know where you're going. Right? Mm -hmm. Moms are wise. They are wise. Sometimes. So at this time, <laughs> what are some questions that you guys have? Because you're gonna get you're gonna get a jump drive next week with a lot of this stuff on it. Um, so to, to make sure you check back with us. I'll send out an email when it's ready to go. Because you, Julian, and I probably will be putting down if we put it together. So. I have a question. Yes. If you need help, I can help you. Okay. At the same time. Um, so for me, I will be going into the field of public health. Right. So I know you talked about how like certain things are good for like, people mm -hmm. who are going into arts or certain things are good for people who are going into education. Right. For people like me who are going into health, not necessarily that I know specifically what I'm going to do. Right. But, well, I have an idea of what I'm going to do. Right. Like, I think I want to do like health professional or something like that. So what would be that? So remember I said education? Mm -hmm. So education isn't just for teachers. Education is also for health promotion. So realize that part of in being in the health field is you are trying to um, help individuals elevate their sense of well-being, sense of resiliency, sense of health and wellness to a new level, right? So you're trying to tackle behaviors, you're trying to tackle um, environmental factors, you're trying to tackle uh, foundational things to make sure that they get to the next point. Well, this article right here is really important. And one of the things, if you look on here, so PhD, MD, and what's the last one? MPH. Ah! So, right, so I was actually already on board <laughs> knowing that some individuals are health because we have a large proportionate amount of students who are health, public health majors, yeah. which I think is important. Um, so this right here breaks it down specifically from developmental educator portfolio to promotional educational portfolio, some specifics, okay? And kind of goes more specifically about some specifics that you will need as a health educator um, or curriculum instructor or whatever you want to do. Um, to kind of build your, your platform. So the last thing I want to cover in your packet, you mentioned what are some things we can include. This is another great list right here. So in, in, interview portfolio tips, right? On this website, information packet, you have right here, 100 teacher portfolio suggestions. So these are 100 different things that you can include in your portfolio. So you have a plethora of examples of things oh, wow. that you can include in your portfolio. Now, the last thing that I gave you is this little activity, basically, that you can do this on your, on your own. So this gives you skill areas, and the back will give you skill areas and work examples to kind of start framing your artifacts for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, this is cool. I'm sorry, I have okay. a question. Yes, more So questions. when I think about skill areas, that would be like things that I can do so like, I don't know, being skilled in Microsoft Office or yes. being in like Photoshop or something like that. Absolutely. So a skill area, so if you wanted to do the more either the thematic or the functional, functional maybe computer and office skills. You could have that one lay that. What are some things you can do um, specifically? Um, also, another cool area, also in your packet, I gave you a hard copy of my portfolio before I turned it into a resume. Oh, so yes. you have a copy of cool. what a PowerPoint would look like yeah. as, as a folio, and then Presume, I'll show you that later, but I'll have all the links and stuff for you next week. I've seen it. So, so, and I will tell you, I used it in my last job interview, and people were very impressed. They couldn't stop talking about it. So. That word in itself is just cutting edge. Like, Presume. Presume. Presafolio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what are some additional questions? Do you guys have any questions? I think that's not too the thing. Uh, how long do I tell? Oh, well, never mind. I'm going to get an answer. Right. Framework. So in the framework right here, like I said, the best place to start 
is this page right here. Start writing your stuff down, and when you yeah. kind of start framing it, if you've got additional questions, come see me. Go go to the career center. Um, talk to a career specialist about some information about how to frame this, and continue working. You know, I, I said when we, the jump drives that we give you that you pick up next week with the packet of stuff will kind of help set the tone as you go forward. Okay. Say like you do like um, what am I trying to shut down? I'll tell you about cortisol. Absolutely, or yeah. Like, like say not apply to it, but like say it should led me to do research on it. Say I did for a crack clue I learned from that. Absolutely. I would include if you decided to write a paper or you decided to write like a review of some information or what are some of the learning outcomes or things that you you did if you did a project on that. About uh like my capstone, we have to do a research project on mine is like the Civil War and right. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that's, so, that's cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for coming tonight. I hope you learned a lot of good information. Yeah, I hope this was very is. beneficial for you. Um, tell your peers that we that's why we have this workshop. So it really is to kind of help help you guys orchestrate yourselves, but it really is kind of a foundational piece yeah. mm -hmm. before you graduate. And that's really kind of one of the pieces that I really wish that this career center that would do, would go ahead and learn and know the understanding and the importance of this developmental piece so they can use uh, with students. You know, I realized... Um, before I go, but like I'm taking this understanding creativity class, and she make she she requires us to have this journal, but she doesn't call it a journal because that's too like personal. She calls it an idea book. But virtually, what you what we're doing with this rent this portfolio is what we're doing in that class. Yeah, and um, it's more like kind of whimsical and artsy and stuff, but like that's definitely relatable. And she said we can keep all our journal stuff, like all our. All our materials after the class. Right. If you want to use so it. basically, in essence, she's helping you start some framework. Exactly. Basically, your visionary piece for your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So it's brilliant. Basically, what she's doing, you don't know that that's what she's doing, but that's what she's doing. She's yeah. helping you frame a portfolio with using small concept ideas with that visualized creative energy, which is good. Yeah. So I didn't even know you would like. So if I wanted to get. Um, like after I graduate and stuff, can I like get a copy of every like I will find you if you're not here, <laughs> but like can I just like get my folder to see what I could put in my Yeah, absolutely. That's another thing too you don't realize is that in, in your folders thing that you've done, yeah, workshops and things, we keep a record, a running record, all that stuff. So like things that like you've been to. Those pictures and stuff we're Yeah, you could you could include those things in your portfolio. Oh, wow. That's when Ahmed, when Ahmed was going for his graduate school, I was like, you know, we have some artifacts that you can he's like, Really? And I was like, Yeah. So mm -hmm. I printed some things off and gave them to him. He's like, I didn't know I didn't even know you had this. And I was like, Did you ever ask? This is why Roar this. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Roar. <laughs> But on that note, no. It, uh, once we get the packets, everybody, you know, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help you work on them because um, I know how effective it can be. And you know what's interesting is nobody showed me how to do this. Mm -hmm. I learned it all myself, and so that's why for Seeking me, knowledge. I'm passing the torch of knowledge how to do this because it is so impactful. Mm -hmm. And then when someone, when you go and you either have a hard copy or you have an attached copy as a present day or present folio. You can see, and people say, wow, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, I can kind of see some of your skill sets.